I think it's a really interesting question, Ole, and I have to cast my mind back to when, just before we set up Sego, which is back in 2015, yeah. um, our CEO, now Emmanuel and I, were working with each other in a different capacity. Um, and that capacity did really trigger um, the birth of Sega. Uh, yeah. And what Emmanuel um, set me up to do, no, no small feat, was he asked me to lead a project on, with Harvard uh, Kennedy School on how transparent was the football profession, men's professional football industry. Mm. So I went with Professor Matt Andrews and we, we opened up the door to, you know, many football, you know, FIFA, UEFA were involved as well as all of the, uh, lots of samples of, of uh, soccer clubs from around the world. Yeah. And what it came down to, and obviously our CEO, Emmanuel, did know what the answer was. He didn't know the exact percentage, but right. he knew that from a transparency point of view, it was pretty dark. There's yeah. actually 90 percent of soccer uh, football is a dark was a dark space back in 2015. Wow. We had wow. an event um, which was actually at the WIPO um, in Geneva, which is the World Intellectual Property Office, yeah. and we called it the FITS Forum, the Financial Integrity and Transparency in Sport, yeah. and that really was the the genesis of Sega without even knowing what Sega right. was because we gathered all sides of the industry. Um, which are the stakeholders that make up our coalition. We gathered sport, we gathered sponsors, we gathered uh, international organizations, we gathered governments, right. um, all around this uh, to discuss what was the issue. And let's not beat around the bush. At the, at the backdrop in 2015, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the head of FIFA had just been decapitated, metaphorically speaking. Right, right, um, right, for, right. For, and, in, and a whole load of um, sports officials were indicted yeah. um, by, the, by the Swiss authorities. So, sorry, by the US authorities. So, yeah, uh, and then Switzerland. So that was the state of it in 2015. And all of the work we're doing at SEGA is to eradicate corruption through these universal standards. And I really think that we can affect change really effectively through our, uh, our rating system, which will then hold sports organizations accountable. But what I've seen in the last few years is that sports organizations are not being reactive. They're being proactive. This mm. is not an effort to, um, you know, name and shame. It's it's right. a, it's an opportunity to uh, for sports organisations to say, look, we need some governance. Can you help us? And we'll work with them to ensure that they are compliant and give them a transitionary period. And then we will publish the rating. And that's during the pilot phase. And I'm working with several European federations as well as international federations and national Olympic committees during that pilot phase. Yeah. And when we announce those results, I believe other sports organizations will see the benefit and want to get their house in order too. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, a, um, it's an evolutionary process. Yeah. Other changes I've seen is obviously the BLM movement last year, huge trigger. Um, not just um, for race, but other other issues as well. Um, and, and I think that these social social movements are yeah. now changing. We're not waiting for governments. We're not right. waiting for lawmakers. We are empowering ourselves to make the change. And that's yeah. what Sega is, empowering um, the sports organizations to come along a 